Moonshiner's most heated moments. Making Moonshiner can be extremely stressful and dangerous. As a result, it leads to many arguments and heated moments throughout the show. Sick arguing. You argue just to argue, and I'm sick of it. I'm done fighting. It's either working out or I'm done working. I'm not understanding it. I'm done. I'm done. On this intense day, Bill and Josh were attempting to make some moonshiner in the middle of the woods. However, the police were after them. Deputy Sheriff Kevin Williams has a zero tolerance policy towards moonshiners, and he's hell bent on taking down every shiner in his district. Moonshiner. This officer had a zero tolerance policy on moonshiners and was ready to arrest Bill and Josh at any moment. Josh and Bill then went to South Carolina in the woods to look for a still site. Here now we are trying to find water sources. We're trying to find cover from the air. We're trying to find a place that we can actually get to. Eventually, the two would find an adequate water source for their still site. However, as the two were formulating plans to funnel the water into their still site, they got into an extremely heated argument. Sick of it. I mean, it's impossible to work with somebody when they're not willing to work with you. Well, quit fighting me. I ain't fighting. You are I'm fighting about me. Fight. You've argued about every step of the I way. I ain't arguing now. I'm telling you my suggestions. Suggestions you asked. This argument would escalate more, and Josh even threatened Bill with a knuckle sandwich. The two were frustrated and felt like nothing was being done working together. Josh lashed out on Bill, and the results of the argument will truly shock you. Thank you, sir. I know it's your nature to know exactly what you're doing and to be in charge of what you do, and I understand that. I have been a little combative today all around. Mark and Digger would get into one of the biggest arguments on the show after they questioned Mike and his team after Mark and Digger noticed that their still sight disappeared. This argument got extremely heated very fast. Here to talk to you, brother. You better be here to do a little bit of listening. Dan, we appreciate you, brother. We'll see you, brother. Okay. I reckon you know why you're here. I do. Mike apparently had an intricate and lucrative 250 gallon still sight, which would help him make moonshine. However, he eventually noticed that it was gone. Mike then went off on Mark and his crew, accusing them of stealing his still sight. My, my still got stole. A 250 gallon still got stole. Kelly did not steal your still. Me and Digger did not steal your still. Maybe y'all did. No, they don't maybe to it. Hell, we don't need your stills. Hell. Mark was not having it and went off on Mike and denied the accusations. Mark would soon tell Mike that he was being extremely ungrateful and how it is because of him and his team that Mark was able to get the success he got. He probably saved your life. No, 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 no. You need to be listening. Well, just I just want to say, I Son, will you've got listen. two eyes and two ears and one mouth. You're supposed to do twice as much listening and looking as you are talking. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to hear me since I'm here. I'm going to talk. You ain't got to keep sitting there. Mark and Digger then called out Mike for blowing up their still. Mike apologized for his actions, but left a rift in the relationship between him and Mark and Digger. Mark then offered Mike a deal to end this conflict. We want $7,500 for our steel that you blowed up. And you're going back across the county line. They ain't no offer. This is a damn order. I tell you what I can do. All I'm running on is a 30 gallon pot. Mike then took the deal and saw this as an opportunity to redeem himself. He formally apologized to everyone he did wrong. He would then make a promise to fulfill his part of the deal. Take a look. I'll do everything I got to do to pay my debt. Me and Martin Digger, we've got a deal. You know, it's gonna be tough, it's gonna be rough. I just gotta double up and, and try, but it's not the end of the world. The Moonshiners must always work in secrecy in order to avoid authorities. In this instance, 
a suspicious buyer meets up with Mike and Jerry with an unexpected guest, which could have been the police or a potential threat. Red, yeah. I got one damn question for you. Brad, how'd it go? Red, what the hell are you thinking, brother? What do you mean, brother? Who you got in the damn vehicle with you? That's just my woman. Just your woman? I don't know her. Mike, come on now. We don't need this, man. Last time you said you didn't have nobody with you, you know better than that. Mike and Jerry got a call from a customer who wanted to order some of their moonshine. The two then got to work making their moonshiner and getting a big payday. Well, look who finally decided to show the hell up. Jerry's supposed to be out buying jars, you know, and Jerry's been late a couple of times, you know. A man can tolerate something once. As the two were preparing the moonshine, a heated argument would start between Jerry and Mike as Mike kept bossing around Jerry and Jerry felt extremely disrespected and spoke up about it. Stay in touch, let me know what the hell's going on. Stay in touch, you're the one that didn't show up. You're supposed to call me. I hired you. Okay, yeah, that's the way it works? Yeah. So now you're my boss, not my partner? No, we're partners. Yeah. That's why you should have called me and let me know what was going on. You that's knew there was work to be done. As far as I'm concerned right now. Jerry was not pleased with Mike, but needed to put their differences aside in order to complete this big order. Mike and Jerry would soon make up and got in their trucks to meet up with a buyer in a hidden location away from any potential authority. 15 gallons of good grain whiskey. But you know, we're not even putting a dent in that stash house, but we're still making a lot of money at this time of the year. Is that the little place you talk about? See right here on the left? I'm changing some dirt road, man. In an unexpected turn of events, this buyer had someone accompanying him in the back of his car. The buyer claimed that this person was his woman and that she meant no harm. However, Mike was still suspicious and did not want anyone else to know about these illegal activities. The time you was come bought from you didn't have nobody with you. You know the damn rules. I'm sorry, but it won't happen again. Look here, let's hang on, hang on. Let, let me talk to Jerry. You just hold up right there a minute. Let me talk to Jerry. I shouldn't even consider this. <laughs> What in the damn hell is he doing? He ain't never brought nobody with him. I don't know what the hell he's thinking. Why he... Jerry was just as concerned as Mike, but eventually let it slide and continued to do business with the buyer. But he got a very strict and intimidating warning. Take a look. I don't know who she is. We don't know who this lady is. Just go ahead and take your horn back see how you like it. She's cool. We understand that. Got man, eyes and ears though, man. That ain't, that ain't what we like. Oh, that's good. You like it's a little it? different than usual. And you say you got my 15? We got you 15 gallons. You mm -hmm. know the price. Let's get this deal done and get the